Hey, what's up? Ken from Palm Beach Dino here. Today on the Dino, we have Anthony from Belgian Wheels uh, S550 Mustang on the Dino. It, it features a Vortec JTB supercharger. Uh, we've tuned Anthony's car in the past. I don't believe we've ever done a video on it though. Uh, when, it was, when it was stock, it did very, very well. It made 844 rural horsepower. Um, so what we're going to do today is it really isn't much of a change in the car other than it has a built engine now and some fuel system changes, but it was on E85 return before just some upgrades to uh, handle the power. But he is only on ID1000s and I feel like we're going to max those out today. So let's see if we can find the limit of the ID1000s and see what the built motor did for him. Let's go ahead and do a pull. Okay, there's the first pull. Uh, first off, let's go over his numbers a little closer from last time. He made 844 horsepower and 601 foot-pounds of torque. That pull made 866 and seven, or 671 torque. Now, I've been trying to go over these dyno graphs and details with you guys so you understand them a little bit better. The first uh, reaction to that, to somebody who doesn't know how to read a dyno graph, is going to say we only picked up 22 horsepower. Now, if you look at the graph here, you can see that we only did that pull to about 6600 rpm so the car is still continuing to climb this peak number is going to go up uh, obviously the uh, the new peak number is going to go up the torque number most likely will not because we've already passed peak torque or close to it peak torque before was at 7000 we we pulled it to uh 67 so yeah peak torque might go up a hair um, what we really want to look at is the gains at any particular rpm so if you um now, of course, you can't do this with just a printed out dynograph, but in the software, if you turn on the cursor, we can look right at this point, okay? So these numbers are 765, this is at uh, 6700 RPM. The old numbers were 765 and 596. The new number is 858 and 765. So just short of 100 horsepower and... Um, you know, a little over 70 foot-pounds of torque. Now, uh, Anthony did change some fuel pump stuff, and on the old tune, we had to do um, some tuning hacks to get fuel in it, and now that it has proper fuel pumps in it, um, it's a little bit on the rich side. So I expect these numbers to go up a little bit. For those wondering, we only do a partial pull, and this is actually a little further than I probably really wanted to go. We're gonna, we do a partial pull to make sure everything's okay. Uh, you can't just throw a car on the dyno even though it has the same fuel injector, same mass air meter, same basic setup. You can't just throw it on the dyno and let it rip. Now, I was watching the air fuel ratio and knock during the pull and it seemed fine, but I still like to pull up a little bit short, evaluate what's going on, and then make another pull. So we're gonna go ahead and lean this out a little bit and we'll go ahead and do a full pull and see what we pick up.
All right, now we're talking. As you can see, uh, using the example from before, comparing these two peak numbers, um, primarily a very similar tune other than leaner. If you look at the peak number, it's up 150 horsepower, right? And that is because we pulled it to a higher RPM. So remember, these peak numbers that any dyno shows you, if you don't understand how to read the graph, it can be very misleading. Uh, we did pick up a little bit of torque. Like I said, nothing changed throughout this range where peak torque was other than leaning it out. Um, so now we're at 994 and 691. It looks like we're about ready to run out of injector, although I didn't pull it up quite high enough on that pull to say for sure. Uh, what we'll do is, is we're gonna make one more pull. Um, it's still a slightly fat. We'll lean it out just a little bit more um, and try to pull it to like 8200 RPM and see if we have enough injector based on the math of what the injector should support. Uh, that's another important point when we're talking about what an injector will support. Everybody says, this injector will support this horsepower. There's not enough information there to, um, to determine that, even if you're talking about a specific fuel. ID1000s will support 1,000 rear wheel horsepower on E85. That is impossible to say because it's going to very much depend on RPM. Why does RPM matter with injectors? Well. An injector, the higher the RPM, the less amount of time it has to spray in the window, right? Because the engine's spinning faster. So um, at a very low RPM, say, let's say you make peak power at 6,000 RPM, you have a larger window to spray the injector. The injector can't get any larger, but it sprays for a longer period of time. You take that same amount of airflow at 8,000 RPM, you have a much shorter window to be able to spray that fuel. So something like the Coyote that revs a little bit higher and each year higher and higher and higher. Uh, we just spun a 2018 build engine to 8,800. So that is even uh, more fuel uh, injector demand at any particular peak horsepower level. So that's another important factor. Anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and make a couple changes to this and we'll do one more pull and see what it makes. Okay, there we go. We hit the number that uh, Anthony was looking for. Unfortunately, we went a little lean up top due to uh, the injectors running out, which I expected. Um, now, we could add fuel pressure and extend the range of the injector, but we're just running out too soon. We're running out around 7,500. As you can see, the power starts to roll off around that area, 7,600, because it's going lean. Um, but we hit 1,000 and 700. We uh, eclipsed that 700 torque number, which this is going to be a killer setup once it's 100% dialed in with the proper injector. But let's go ahead and look at his before and after numbers. I talked about what you're going to pick up with a um, built engine over a stock engine. Now the engine itself, of course, uh, doesn't really help it make any more power. I mean, certainly, um, you know, it could. Uh, there's things you could do to an engine, camshafts, higher compression and all that to make more power. But that's not what this is. This is just a stronger version of a stock engine which allows us to pull, push it harder. Now, you could, you, you could do this uh, orange graph on a stock engine. We have. You've probably seen videos of us doing it. But, you know, Anthony didn't want to do that to his stock engine. And he built it. And now this should live a long life as long as he upgrades these injectors. Uh, so anyway, let's take a quick look. Uh, so let's just go to 7500 which is pretty close to where peak power is. So this isn't working, this one. So we'll park the cursor right here at 7,500. And of course we can't read those numbers. Let's see. Sorry guys, sometimes that's a little hard to read. Let's see if that changes anything. Now, I believe that should be, let's call it 834. Unfortunately, they just throw this number wherever they want and they throw it right over the line. It makes a lot of sense. So we're at 1,001 and I believe that's 834. So you're talking about just about 70 horsepower increase and right here, 584 torque to 701 torque, you're talking about over 100 foot pounds of torque increase. Okay, where did that come from? Well boost of course so Anthony put a uh, overdrive lower on it but Anthony this is a uh, overdrive lower with what 3-1 upper yeah 3-1 upper 
So we're, we went from 13.2 pounds of boost at that RPM to 20. So you're talking about um, seven pounds of boost and over 170 horsepower gain. So you're talking, let's see, 140 would be 20. Um, so you're talking, uh, you know, uh, my math isn't working. What is it? What's 170 divided by seven? You got a calculator? 24? Yeah, okay. So you're talking 170 horsepower gain on seven pounds of boost. That's just short of 25 horsepower per pound of boost. That's about right for this setup. Now, like I said, we were running out of injector up top. Up here, it was way too lean. So we're gonna send Anthony on his way with a 7,500 RPM rev limiter just to be sure he doesn't spin and over rev the engine and make it lean out. Uh, but what I suspect, <clears throat> as you can see here, the power really flat lines and then falls off when it really shouldn't with what he's got done, uh, but that's fuel related. So as we get the fuel in there, this is gonna continue to climb. So on this setup, um, I would suspect closer to maybe 1,050 or so uh, once completely dialed in. This is a stick shift car. Um, so that's pretty much it. Uh, Vortec JTB, a built engine at, uh, you know, stock cams and everything, just a stronger engine, non-sleeved engine. You're talking about 1,000 rule horsepower at 7,500 RPM on 20 pounds of boost. That's pretty amazing. So anyway, please uh, like this video, subscribe to our channel, and be sure to join us on the next one.